Okay, give us a second here. I'm going to twitch in, and we'll go ahead and get started for tonight. Uh, again, for tonight, really not that much going on for the time being, but we will be looking for the potential of some more problems coming our direction into the next day or two uh, with rainfall. That'll be into the weekend, but that's going to be about as much as what we're going to be looking for for the time being. We do still see some possibilities, some severe weather back out to the west of us. Again, we'll talk more about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. And another atmospheric river hitting the west coast, kind of an extension of the first one, but this one expected to be worse than the first. And we'll talk about why that is and what it looks like coming up here in just a little bit. If you're just joining us, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik from News 12 in downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee. It is Thursday night, the first day of the second month, and we finally got out of January, and we'll be looking again at some decently quiet weather for now into the weekend. Again, that could be a bit of an issue, but we'll talk about that in just a little while. Another chilly start to the morning. Temperatures in the mid to upper 30s and a few mid-60s possible for highs tomorrow, very much above normal as we go into Friday. High temperatures today, not that bad. Decently above normal on the highs, just a bit below normal on the lows. Finishing up the first month with about, uh, again, an inch point 28 ahead for the year. And for the month, we did okay uh, earlier into the month or so, but we're still doing a pretty good surplus of rainfall so far. Record low, of uh, 10 in 1900. Record high that hasn't been broken since 1887. So we came pretty close to that. Tomorrow, again, a bit on the brisk side in the morning. Temperatures will be back in the mid-60s through the day. Winds not quite as breezy as what we've seen for a while. And that means, again, heading out on the golf course, we could be seeing a very brisk start to the morning, but otherwise not doing too bad. And temperatures like this, 15 degrees above normal, that's pretty nice for early February around here, so looking pretty good all the way on through. On the satellite radar composite, there's really nothing in the way of radar being picked up here. We're seeing less in the way of rain anytime soon, but we will be looking for the potential of more rain out there. There is some scattered showers, very light. They were back over to around Little Rock earlier. Now some showers north of Baton Rouge and down toward the delta of the Mississippi and some speckles of rain up toward around Rolla, Missouri, uh, into and around the area of Koshkanong, one of my favorite towns in America, just being able to say that for around uh, Missouri purposes. So maybe some light, very, very light scattered showers out there. And that's about all that we have to worry about for right now. Let's go ahead and take a look outside and show you Island Cove. A uh, couple of airplanes on the flight path out there, but otherwise not looking at too bad conditions. Mostly clouds out across the area and temperatures still pretty mild. Cool, yes, chilly if you want to call it that. Mid-40s for current temperatures and winds are currently calm, so not much to worry about in the way of wind chills. All right, here's the way. We're going to take a kind of a quick approach here because, unfortunately, we got started a little late. If you haven't tuned in on Thursdays, we have to record some stuff for the weekend, so we have to do that at about 10 o'clock, so I have to wait until after that's over with. That's not a complaint. That's just talking about how things like that work. So if you're uh, wondering why we started so late, apologies on Twitch TV and everybody else for uh, not getting here a little sooner but thanks to everybody for sticking around and keeping an ear on things and an eye as well the rest of the forecast is going to depend on what happens with our next storm system coming on through high pressure in control over the gulf of mexico this is stirring up some moisture you can see that with the clouds out there but that's about it. And then as we zoom out, we've got a couple of things to talk about here. Number one is the potential of this next cold front coming down from the north. Again, some stray showers south of St. Louis, Rolla into the Wabash Valley, but that's about all that we've got. This will be dropping through the area coming up tomorrow, but dry on all sides, minus that teeny tiny little bit of moisture there. The next system afterwards is going to be coming in uh, from the west and then there's another system setting up out there along with another atmospheric river we'll talk about that in just a little bit but that's the way it looks like for right now taking the short term and again going into tomorrow morning 
not that much. Temperatures again back in the lower 40s or so. Uh, getting into around early tomorrow morning, that front just north of us. Temperatures back into around the mid 60s. That cold front is really not going to do anything to our weather tomorrow. Winds switch from south to north, maybe. And that's going to be about it. For Saturday morning, chilly, upper 30s to lower 40s. And then we get into Saturday afternoon, pleasant temperatures in the high 50s. We start to see more potential of moisture back to our west around Sunday morning. And then that storm system out west digs down to the south of us. More chances of rain into around portions of Sunday afternoon and evening. And then some lingering showers possible as we go toward drive time Monday. But we're honestly not talking about much of anything at this time so looking very quiet overall now here's the way that again is that storm system coming in from off the west coast that's that lat latest storm system out there what we are going to be seeing is again the system getting a little closer to us uh tomorrow anything past colorado wyoming and uh, areas of new mexico i'd watch that area very carefully for travel snarls and some slowdowns so let's uh, be careful if you're heading out west and pack a lot of patience higher elevations between denver and san francisco seattle and albuquerque could be seeing some pretty good amounts of snow out there and we're talking the possibility of several inches worth and we're not done yet more on that in just a little bit the main part of that storm system see that bend in the jet stream right there and that swirl going on around the panhandles, that is the next storm system that's going to be moving through our area coming up on Sunday. But once again, that digs down to the south, so it does not seem to be a major concern for us at this time. So showers on Sunday, Monday, maybe a rumble of thunder, but beyond that, that is really going to be it for everything. Now, I want to bring in uh, the Internet here page, so I'm going to see the, the graphic behind you is going to, Kind of disappear for a second so i want to put this up here for everybody to be able uh, to see this this is from the noaa weather prediction center the wpc this is for next week this is for sunday through next this coming sunday through next tuesday and we are looking at some worse conditions than what we're seeing from this first one so this atmospheric river event or ar event Longer duration, potentially stronger than that of the one that is moving through California and the West Coast right now. Mountain snow, five to 6,000 feet heavy. We're talking several feet of snow with this next system. This is going to be really great news for the reservoirs and the ski resorts. Not quite so much for travelers out this way. Heavy rainfall could be a problem. Mudslides, landslides, uh, could be some flash flooding out there and strong winds and high surf could be an issue into this early part of next week. So we are talking about some very heavy muds and winter storm situation from roughly north of Sacramento back up into the Sierras. That is where we could see some pretty good amounts of slowdowns taking place, and that could be a bit of a strong potential problem for travelers out there. And again, that is coming up next week, February 4th through 6th. Why are we telling you about this? if this has absolutely nothing to do with the News 12 viewing area, because this is the place for weather information and we want to make certain that you are ready for this particular storm system. If you're heading that direction, that's something to watch out for. Again, this is going to be great news for busting the drought out west. Necessary rainfall and snow, no question about that, but it is going to be a mess where it comes for travelers. Again, traveling anywhere to the west coast states or the western third of the united states for that matter i would watch this system with a lot of interest and be very careful and have a lot of patience as this next system rolls on through uh welcome to everybody on twitch tv thanks for joining us on there carlos yates from memphis welcome to the show bishop bob midget good evening to you and mr josh hope everything is well where you are and looking forward to the rain this weekend. Yes, this is. I've got to develop a graphic for a nap index just to be able to say that uh, this is a going to be good activity for napping in and around the area for the next week or so. All right, taking a look at severe weather before we get into the rest of the forecast. This next Friday, not tomorrow, not furry fake forecaster day on Groundhog Day, but next week, February 9th, 6 p.m., 2525 to Sales Avenue, CHI Memorial Hospital. 
National Weather Service in Morristown going to be offering another one of their Skywarn events. Please consider becoming a Skywarn volunteer. These meetings last about an hour, hour and a half out of your time, and you get to get a special phone number from the National Weather Service. You give them your phone number so they can contact you and say, what are you seeing? You become the eyes and the ears of the National Weather Service, so please consider doing that. A few days after that, Bradley County, Tennessee, we're featuring the meetings that are directly in the News 12 viewing area for our viewers here so they know what's coming up. And there's not that many of them this time around. So far, National Weather Service Peachtree City, Georgia, has not offered any meetings that we've seen. I'll have to check that again. National Weather Service in Huntsville, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But for Bradley County, on Thursday, February 15th, 6 p.m., at the Cleveland, Tennessee, Bradley County 911 Center. Again, 6 p.m. Eastern. Register for a seat. Totally free. Paid for by your and my tax dollars. But register for a seat so the National Weather Service knows how many people are showing up. Weather.gov slash MRX. Just to be, again, a polite neighbor on that. Now, for anybody in the community who is deaf or hard of hearing, we want to make certain that you are aware of this type of situation. National Weather Service, in when I was growing up, didn't feature much in the way of signing or anything in the way of uh, anything ASL uh, language equivalent. So when we see programs like this, it's really great to be able to say uh, this is a great outreach to the deaf and hard of hearing community. So if you are deaf and hard of hearing and reading the captions off this, if you know someone who's deaf and hard of hearing, in the Huntsville, Alabama area, taught by the National Weather Service in Huntsville. The Severe Workshop will be coming up next Tuesday, February 6th at 6 p.m. at AIDB Huntsville Regional Center, 4092 Memorial Parkway Southwest in Huntsville. Again, this is kind of off of our patch, but with something like this that is really great outreach to the deaf and hard of hearing community, we want to make certain everybody is aware of this to spread the word about what's going on really goodwill from really great goodwill from the national weather service again more information at weather.gov slash hum asl and cart services will be provided if you'd like to find out a little bit more about that again please go to their website for more details on that all right let's take a look at the seven day forecast island cove arena and resort on the epb fiber optics weather cam network in the background Fake forecaster, furry fake forecaster day tomorrow. Temperatures back in the mid 60s, very much on the mild side. Cooler as we head towards Sunday, and that's going to be about the only chance of rain that we get. It's a lot less than what we saw a few days ago, but that'll be our next best chance of rain, mainly Sunday evening through. Monday, a few scattered showers there. Temperatures remain quite mild next week. First full week of February is going to look very much on the mild side, almost like late March. Uh, very mild conditions out there. And not, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies are playing up again. But if you have the opportunity to be outside, not that much in the way of colder weather. A bit chilly as we get toward the mid part of next week. But honestly, that's just about all that we have to talk about for right now. So very much on the mild side all the way on through. And for February, that is something you really cannot say uh, all that often out there. want to make everybody aware of this in and of the fact that, okay, first of all, a astronomical, 67 days and counting until the total solar eclipse. Now, we won't be in the path of totality here in Chattanooga, but we'll be close enough to where it is going to be a really cool show. So get ready for that. 67 days away. Spread the word. Talk it up. Talk about science. Get more information out to everybody as you possibly can. This is happening tonight into tomorrow morning. If you haven't heard about this, this is absolutely, completely, and totally true. This is not fake science. This is not fake news. What's going to be happening is a large asteroid about the size of, say, Finley Stadium is going to be winging its way through our part of the solar system. Now, the area between the Earth and the Moon is called, that's that right there, that distance is called one lunar distance. And that is approximately, give or take, about 240,000 miles. So that's a long way to go to get there. One asteroid a, about a little few weeks ago, a lot smaller, went right between the Earth and the Moon's orbit. This one is a little farther off. It's about seven, 
times away from the Earth as the Moon is from the Earth, so it's a little bit farther distance. But if you take a look at this in the context of the size of the general size of the universe, this is a cosmic cat's whisker for us. It is not going to hit. No matter what you hear from anybody else out there, there is not going to be a risk of asteroid 2008-07-S7. Sorry about that. This right here, again, will be swinging very close to us, but it will not be coming through that Earth-Moon keyhole area, which is where asteroid Apophis might be swinging into coming up in a couple of years' time. So this is it's close. It's not as close as it could be. It's not a danger to threaten, but it is still a near-Earth object or NEO. And again, this is pretty doggone close. So if you'd like to know more tomorrow, several websites will be covering this including the Virtual Telescope Project. I believe they're going to be able to ping this with radar and uh, also keeping an eye on it with very powerful telescopes. So if you'd like to watch this, search out the Virtual Telescope Project or go to my social media pages and you can find out more about what's going on here. That starts at 1 o'clock Eastern, February 2nd. Need to be able to see this, but uh, a good reason why. And everybody says, well, what do we need to have a space program for? This is why we need a good space program, not to go out and throw missiles at it, although that may be a possibility at some point in time in the future. Learning about these things, this is one of approximately just 25,000 near-Earth objects in general. There are millions of other pieces of uh, debris left over in the solar system just flinging around all over the place. Some of them hit our atmosphere and we never know it. This one is known as a city killer because it's about as tall as the Empire State Building, maybe a little taller than the Eiffel Tower, but it would have enough impact to basically destroy a city. Uh, again, no possibility of this hitting the Earth at this time, but it was only discovered in 2008. Some of these more recent asteroids have only been discovered in uh, within a couple of days of them passing on through uh, the area around the earth so that is why math science engineering technology is so important to make sure that everybody pays attention to stuff like this and so we can find all these rocks out there comets asteroids meteors whatever find them and make certain that they are not a threat to us here the dinosaurs as neil degrasse tyson has said didn't know their asteroids were coming what is our excuse? Something to think about there. So tomorrow, I uh, believe it's about midday to evening when this is going to be winging on through. But again, catch it and more information. We'll have details on it coming up a little bit later on. Uh, let's see. Panaagua Auto Mall weather question of the day. Tropical storms most commonly retired letter in the alphabet. Which one is it? And 55% of you chose I. 7% for F and J, and 31% for C. Correct answer was I. So if you'd like to vote in another one of our polls, wdef.com slash vote now. And thanking Panaagua Auto Mall for being our sponsor for this. Uh, what's, I think I forgot, yeah, here we go. Weather window of the day from uh, Langley Roofing. Apologies for the error earlier on News 12 at 6 o'clock. Had the wrong name here. Gloria Ralston. Beautiful view from above Salt Lake City, looking back toward the Rockies. Excellent picture right there. Love pictures. I was, I was born in the Rockies, so that's uh, something that speaks very highly to me on there. Uh, if you've got pictures, please send them in to us at pictures at WDEF.com or drop them to our social media pages as well. If you would like to do some stargazing this weekend, I don't know if they're going to close this down because of the weather. Uh, hopefully the lecture will go on at the UTC Clarence T. Jones Observatory on 10 North Tuxedo Avenue. Uh, the lecture this Sunday, February 4th, hopefully it clears up to give us some peaks at the through the telescopes. Whether or not that happens, we'll let them make the decision on that. I'm sure they'll post it to social media. Barnard Astronomical Society, they'll be holding their star party about a week after Clarence T. Jones UTC. Uh, observatory. That'll be Saturday, February 10th, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., Harrison Bay State Park, Harrison Bay State Park, Tennessee, and more information about that star party at barnardastronomy.org. One last uh, one bit of information, trying to throw this out there for uh, everybody. 
Uh, I'm an amateur radio operator. It's one of my favorite hobbies, as well as being a stargazer, an astronomer, a chef, things like that. So if you'd like to know more about amateur radio, no better place than a ham fest. And the Dalton Amateur Radio Club will be holding their, quote, first and best ham fest in Georgia, unquote, the Dalton Ham Fest. This uh, February 24th, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. There is an admission fee, if I'm not mistaken. You can check out their website or, again, find out more. Just search Dalton Amateur Radio Club held at the North Georgia Fairgrounds. 500 Legion Drive in Dalton again Saturday, February 24th, uh, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So find out more there uh, if you'd like to know more about amateur. I got my amateur radio license in 2000. I wish I would have gotten it much sooner because it is a very fun hobby to take advantage of and to learn all about stuff. Your kids could benefit from it. It's a really neat idea. That should do it for tonight, and again, a uh, few chances of rain, but definitely not anytime soon, so looking very quiet overall uh, into and around the area there. So we'll go ahead and throw it back to your regular net programming for Thursday evening, and we'll keep our eyes on things into uh, the next several days, so keep it tuned to News 12 uh, on air and online for more information. Chip Chapman has your forecast for Friday and into the weekend coming up on News 12 this morning at 5 a.m. Friday morning, so stay tuned for that. Live and direct, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik on weather overtime for Thursday evening. Stay tuned for more with News 12 on air and online.